Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma Fave, and today we are again talking about the Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 watercolor pastels. So last video I showed you all the techniques on how to use them, everything I know about them, and today I'm going to show you four really really simple beginner paintings that you can do with these crayons. And if you don't have these, maybe some other kind of water soluble medium. So let's jump in and get started. Okay, so now that we're more acquainted with our Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 water soluble wax pastels, I thought I'd give you four simple ideas of how you can use them for practice. So let's start off by maybe doing, let's do a cactus. I'm just going to throw out random ideas here and we're just going to have fun and learn how to use them. So for this, you can have a lot of fun with what greens you use. Um, I'm just going to, what do I want to wear? Which direction do I want to go here? I'm going to start off with a light color and I'm just going to do a cactus shape here, one there, one there, one there. Why not? Right. <laughs> and I'm just going to start filling it in. I have four sections here that I've divided them into. And this, just because I like making them bright and fun, we can just have a lot of fun with these colors. So I'm leaving some white areas so we can just have some highlights. We're gonna mix up some colors. So that color that I used there, I'll, I'll try and let you know, that was light olive. Let's do like a, what color is this? Malachite green, maybe? on the darker side over here so we can have a little bit of depth and the fun part about these which may be fun for some may not be for others <laughs> are just seeing how it turns out once you start rendering it out is it going to be nice and you know colorful is it what you want is it not what you're going for it's just I don't know it's kind of fun to see it go from this like quick little drawing to something else um, let's do, I want to do like a pink flower on top here. Maybe like with an, a peachy orangey color or something. I don't know. We're just having fun for now. Okay. And then let's just start and see what happens. So I'm going to grab this size eight round. And like I said, in our last video, start at the highlighted area. So where there's not any pigment and then you're just going to work your way out and we're going to see what this looks like and then we can always add more more color more texture see that really nice kind of gradient you get from this really light green and I think the other color green that I added in there I forgot to tell you was grass green it's a bright green okay we can add a little bit of lines there. Why not? I'm not going to touch the pink yet. I'm just going to do the green. Oops. Try not to bring that color into the highlighted area, but that's okay. Really move that darker color around. You can move it into the lighter area if you want just a little like it doesn't have to be perfect I don't know why but these crayons like I said I call them crayons because um, I feel like when I say pastels it really confuses people because remember they are not regular pastels um, they're also not regular crayons either but these watercolor crayons <laughs> I don't know why but just the vibrancy of them and the creaminess of them really get me going to want to create some fun stuff um, I just find them really inspiring to use. They're just not like other watercolor supplies that I've used in the past. So I just have so much fun creating these really bright illustrations with them. Oops, I just dropped a whole bunch of water there. It's okay. And we'll give it a bit of texture. Like that. Like, look how fun that is. And then I'm definitely going to add more green and stuff there. And this is all just mixing colors on the paper, not even using that palette. Okay. I feel like I want to add some more. Hmm. Just deepen it a bit. What color? 
color did I use? I have to remember these things too. It's a greenish blue. It's a different one. There's the one I used. I'm just going to use the end like how I was showing you before. I want a bit of that darker green in there. Might add a bit of that brighter green in there too. I feel like there's too much of a highlight. We can even add, I don't know, any green in there. See what it does? Where did that bright green go? So this is a way that I like to use it a lot too. Just touching the back end to grab that pigment. I feel like I might need to do a bit more once it's dry. I don't know. Maybe just a little bit. I want an ultramarine. Here's an ultramarine. I use a bit of ultramarine for some of the shadows. Now part of it's already dry, so that's why we're getting more sharp lines here. And this part's wet, so it's blending a bit, a bit softer. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash off my brush, dry it, and we're just going to blend out these lines a bit so they're not as, hard, as harsh. There we go. Like that. That's fun. Okay. And then I want some sort of a background. I am going to do more on this cactus. I just kind of want to let it dry first and then we can add some more texture. I'm feeling kind of like this peachy color. So I'm just going to create a background. And I don't know why, but I've just been doing this a lot when I do these illustrations. I just love the way it kind of brightens it up. So again, because... So you don't need to add too, too much of your background color. I don't need to go up that far either. Uh, because once we render it out, there's a lot of pigment here. More than you probably think. And you can always add more if it's not a lot. Um, but you don't need to cover every inch because remember it moves around like paint. I feel like I want to add just like a little bit of orange to some areas. Oops. And then maybe some like pink to others. Like honestly, I don't know how these are going to blend. <laughs> it's kind of surpri a surprise, but this is what I like about it. It's just kind of fun. So I'm just going to grab my flat brush here and I'm just going to start rendering it out and seeing the magic, seeing if this is what I wanted to go for or not. These are, I feel like I just love experimenting with these more than like creating something to have a masterpiece in the end, it's just because it always turns out different than I intend and it's always a surprise. So it's more like practice and just experimenting and fun. I think maybe that's why I've gravitated so much towards these just because when I'm painting with watercolor because I've been doing it for so long I think I always expect myself to create some sort of finished product where it's like a masterpiece where I know what the outcome is supposed to look like and I just I get too hard on myself maybe and this way it's, I know it's going to be a surprise. I know that it, it could turn out completely different than what I intend. And so I enjoy it a little bit more. I enjoy the mystery of how this is going to go. <laughs> so I just, I tend to really gravitate towards these when I'm feeling like I just want to play because that's what they are. Like they're just so much fun to play with. But I look at this, look, I feel like these are paintings that I wouldn't typically always do or gravitate towards like with regular watercolors. So I find it just, it helps me step out of my watercolor box just a little bit and gets me 
excited to try new things. Like, look how fun that is. Okay, and then I feel like that's dry now. We could add, I'm going to add like a little bit of brightness up here. Just like even with the crayon. So remember in the first video I was saying you can just have texture there and not render it out if you don't want to. Um, it's totally up to you how you decide you want to do this. I don't know. Just have some lines. Let's get a little bit of depth in there for the shadows. Where they kind of all meet. Like that. And then maybe some dots. Like, do I love the outcome? I don't know. Like, it's not something I would typically paint or at least like this, like so vibrant with all these colors. But I find it's just so fun. And like even creating greeting cards with these are just a lot of fun. Maybe invitations to like a summer party. I don't know. You can just have a lot of fun with these. Okay, so there's my cactus. <laughs> that was fun. Um, let's try something else. Let's try... I've been doing a lot of fruit on my Instagram. Let's try like a pineapple. I, I don't know. I feel like a pineapple. Okay, so I'm going to start with this yellow. This is just yellow. It's called yellow. And I'm going to start with this kind of like elongated oval, bumpy oval shape. Fill it in a bit. Now it's not completely yellow. I'm going to throw in some orange in there. Again, these aren't really realistic. We can do the kind of pattern... I'm going to throw in some of that light olive. Have like little spikies kind of sticking out. And now once we blend this together, a lot of this is going to get lost. So we could just do like a very, you just test it out now, why not? Soft wash so we still have some of that texture underneath. So I'm not going out of my way to really blend it too much where we lose a lot of those lines. Or you could just blend it all together and then try again. Like you can add some of the texture after. I feel like I've lost a little bit of what could be a highlight. So I'm just going to go over it with some wet, clean water. Wet, clean water. Just clean water and lift up some of that color. There we go. Then I'm going to go in with my green. I'm using that light olive again. And I'm just doing these jagged shapes. It's pointy. I'm going to have this light color towards the tips, I think. And then we're going to go in. I'm liking that darker green, like the same kind of thing here. I feel like I need a medium green though. Hold on. I need just like a, a plain old green. This is called dark green. Like that. And let's get like a really bright green in there. that and let's see what happens so you could do like one area at a time like one little spike at a time if you want to separate it so I started at the lightest area and then I work my way down to the base so you see that gradient of the light to dark then I'm gonna to go to another one that's not touching the one we just did start at the lightest area then work your way down to the base Like that. Again, starting at the tip. 
working my way down to the base. And I'm going to try not to touch other spikes because I want them, I don't want them to blend together. So they will bleed. Like if you have this wet area and this wet area and they touch, they will bleed like watercolors do. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to maintain like some separation between petals or leaves or whatever you're doing. I feel like I should put like brown or something at the top there. You can outline them. Like that. I feel like I need a little bit of brown in there at the base. that and then we can always add some darker bits in there after um, now that this part is dry let's let's go back in with some more color maybe I'll use like a yellow kind of ochre and I'll just do some patterns so again you can leave this texture you don't have to render this out at all make it a little bit lighter over there Get our bright yellow. I don't know, it's totally up to you. I still like that olive color. You know how some of it's kind of, that's too dark. I want that light olive. Maybe just a bit more darkness at the bottom here. Maybe more towards the side will make it a little bit darker. I'm really just scribbling. <laughs> just gonna render the whole thing out like this. Try and blend it up there a bit. I don't know. Just having fun. Okay, let's let's do a fun background. Kind of want to do like a bright pinky color. Another fun thing is if you wanted to lighten up a color, there is a white. You could always like, let's do here. I'm going to do dark pink at the bottom. Okay. I'm going to do it a little bit lighter towards the middle. And then I think I'm going for the same kind of thing. I want this like orange, orangey pink towards the middle, like a sunset almost. And then I'm going to do orange at the top just a little bit. And I might even add white and it's going to make it more of like a pastel -y. I'm thinking like creamsicle orange, you know? Adding a little bit of white on top there. Okay, let's try it. So again, we're starting with the lightest area, right? It's similar to this. But I just feel like with this green and yellow, I feel like this is just the right color combo. We'll try something different for the next one. But to think of it, greens and pinks and stuff are like my favorite color combos. So that wasn't as pastel-y as I thought it was going to be. You could always add more white on top if you wanted to. Okay. 
And there we go. I mean, that's kind of funny looking. <laughs> and I'm going pretty fast here. You could definitely take a lot more time and really go through it nicely. Um, and, you know, you can add more on top if you wanted to. It's totally up to you. I'm just kind of having fun and just doing a lot of scribbling over here. Okay, let's try another one. There are two colors in this palette that I absolutely love. There's the sky blue and then periwinkle blue, which is more like a purpley color. Let's think of something we could use for these. Let's just do some flowers. So you can do some really simple kind of flowers for this. Just outlining some. Maybe we could just do it darker, closer to the center. And then have them a little bit lighter towards the tip of the petals. Like that. And then let's take our brush and again starting at the tips and then working your way to the darker areas. You can just bring some of that color up to the tips a little bit. See how soft that looks? I love these colors. So when you're doing the tips here, you're just touching like the tiniest little bit of that purple and then you're moving slowly into that darker area. You can bring it back up just a little bit to have it blend nicely, but you should have that difference in values of the lightness to darkness. Okay, let's use some greens. Again, I'm gonna go for this light olive. Just really liking it. <laughs> I'm gonna do some leaves. I'm going to grab this Chinese green, which is a very kind of like bright yellowy green. I'm going to add that in there. And then I think I'm going to add some darker green at the base. Let's do, let's do this dark green here. Just a little bit at the base of the leaves. that. Let's see what it looks like when we start rendering these out. And I'm just going to add some yellow into the center of these. Maybe I'll just do some darker little lines just for a little bit of texture. They kind of look like pansies, but they're not the right shape, but we'll just go with that anyway. <laughs> darker blue. I'm going to do just like a nice light blue background. This color is light cobalt blue. It's so pretty. Honestly, there's so many pretty colors in this palette. And that one I might even just leave with the, just the crayon background. Okay, and then our last idea, let's try like a mini little landscape. So I'm gonna go here with some blue. I'm just make it really light towards down here. A little bit darker at the top. And then I want some, you know, bright kind of rolling hills in the background.
maybe even brighter back here. Have some yellow. And some moss green here. Just something like so, so, so simple. Okay, let's just see how that looks. <laughs> So again, I'm starting with the lightest area of the sky, then I'm moving upwards. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. There we go. Do this yellowy kind of hill. And this medium olive green one. And this darker moss green. And keeping some of that texture underneath is really nice too, right? Because it looks a little bit textured like a hill, like grass. You can bring some of this up there. Separate those a little bit more. Let's try and do some trees, like with the wet on wet. Just kind of, actually, let's get a darker green. I got my dark green again. Oh, that's too bright. I feel like maybe this dark olive here will look better. It's already dried here, so it's sharper. Just doing this really fast. <laughs> I'm going to use our palette here. I'm just going to mix a little bit of dark green with this dark indigo blue. So I want a darker, darker green. This is done so fast, it's not <laughs> my best work by far, but you know what, it's fun. birds in the sky you can let it dry and then maybe even you know grab some red do some red flowers down here that's the thing is like a lot of these are um, pretty opaque so if you draw with them like crayons it goes right over colors that you wouldn't be able to go over with watercolor so I'm going over red and green here I'm going over my green with my red here, which would usually kind of be really dull and kind of brown, um, so it might not work, but because these are more opaque, you can actually layer and just draw on top. So that's like a super fun feature with these that you can add. You can add some little stems. That. And there you go. So there are a few different ideas of what you can create with these Neocolor 2 
watercolor wax pastels. If you haven't watched the first video where I go over how to use these step by step, make sure to watch that. Um, and if you guys have any more requests on what you'd like to see me actually do these, maybe something slower, a bit more complicated, um, let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on all my other platforms for tons more content. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.